Hello, and welcome to the John Ark Show. Today, we're going to interview world-renowned astrologer Thomas Parsons. He is a professionally accredited astrologer who has been doing consultations for clients around the world for many years. Today, we're going to ask him some questions about his astrological forecasts for the world of politics, business, finance, and individual celebrities. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe, like, comment, and follow us. Also, remember to click on the notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new episode. I'd like to tell you about a service called hollywoodiscalling.com. It's a great service that allows you to purchase live phone calls from your favorite celebrities, so check them out. It's something you can buy for yourself uh, or as a gift for somebody you care about. As anyone who watches the news knows, the world is getting more uncertain every day. Thomas Parsons has a reputation for doing some of the best astrological forecasting in the world, so we thought it would be interesting to get his view on what's going on and where he sees things headed for the country, for the economy, and for some individuals. Now, J.P. Morgan once said that millionaires don't need astrologers, but billionaires do. In addition to J.P. Morgan, there are many successful people out there who feel that there are forces influencing our economy that we are not yet capable of fully understanding. It is because of that that J.P. Morgan reportedly used astrologers to help guide him with his businesses and his investments. One business publication reportedly interviewed a group of Asian billionaires and asked them if they believed in using astrology to make their decisions. Almost without exception, they all said something similar. They said that they don't allow astrology to be the final determinant of their decision-making, but that they would never be so foolish as to ignore its influence on the market and the business world. So with that, let's say hello to Thomas Parsons. Hi, Thomas. How are you today? I'm, I'm terrific. Thank you for asking. So today, I want to welcome you uh, to the John Ark Show, and we are going to discuss a number of things of great interest to people all over the world and get your astrological opinion on them. Uh, so the first question I have for you is, will President Trump remain in office for the next four years, or will Joe Biden successfully be sworn in as the new president? What are your thoughts? Okay, before I even answer the question, just let me, uh, uh, let's just understand I uh, don't have any kind of political bias here, okay? Sure, sure, sure. Looking, looking at birth dates here is what I'm doing. And uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's an extremely complicated issue, as a matter of fact, when you look at uh, uh, jo uh, Joe Biden's chart, as well as like Kamala's, as well as like Trump. Uh, and even looking at the, uh, you know, the wives, uh, you know, charts, uh, you know, and, as well as Kamala's husband's chart, of course, also, uh, you know, to uh, sort of like uh, really explore the potentials that really exist there. But uh, what, have, what I've come down to is that uh, it looks to me like um, even though uh, the exposure uh, is being presented, I don't think that it's going to interfere uh, with the process of the election. So I would think that uh, uh, Biden is going to, uh, you know, more or less like be our next president, no matter what people think about it. But that's what it looks like to me. Okay. So, um, so you're saying even if it goes to the Supreme Court or to the electors, that that well, won't be enough to, uh, to keep Trump in office? You know, that's, that's a really interesting question because, you know, the cycle, you know, because I'm working with certain planetary cycles, and the, uh, the thing is, is that the, uh, it, it's what we call a, um, uh, a Jupiter-Uranus cycle and Jupiter-Saturn cycle. And uh, the thing is, is that when this last happened, um, there, they actually, there was uh, Bush and Gore. It did go to the Supreme Court. So these same uh, planetary configurations are still here. They're, they're here at this time. And so the, it would be that there could be, um, uh, boy, a, a left field uh, thing coming in that uh, it could go to the Supreme Court. But I'm looking at like, sort of like after the flat, you know, fact as we get into January and February, 
uh, in looking at their individual, uh, you know, uh, planetary makeups that it, it looks to me like even though there may be a glitch, I wouldn't see that as causing um, anybody not to, uh, you know, progress into the position that, you know, is going on here on, uh, I believe it's like December 14th when the uh, Electoral College gets together here. Okay. So if Biden uh, does, in fact, become the new president, do you see Trump or one of his children uh, running for the presidency in 2024? I don't see any beneficiaries, <laughs> let me put it that way, uh, that are going to go on and, and try to uh, uh, complete his legacy. I, I would be um, uh, absolutely surprised. And uh, do you, is there any possibility that Trump may run again in 24? You know, that, that's, uh, um, that's a good question. Um, the, uh, the thing is, is that, l let me put it this way. Uh, I think that there would be a, a very remote possibility that he could do this. Okay. I don't think he's going to gather in the audience because of the four years, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, sort of like been displaced. And uh, so I'm not sure that, uh, you know, he's going to want to, um, you know, plunge into that kind of enterprise again. And I think that there may be another Republican that's going to have a much more of a focal point uh, as well as the progressive ideas, you know, that they want to, uh, you know, sort of like implant in within society. All right. Uh, will Joe Biden remain as president uh, if he's in office or do you see him leaving because of some issues? Well, that's just it. I am going to be surprised. Um, I, I would look at it this way. I, I think that he could actually leave that position within the first six months. Really? Uh, I've looked at, uh, you know, Kam uh, Kamala's uh, planetary makeup, and uh, she has what we call a Uranus aspect. And Uranus is sort of like a lightning bolt that sort of like suddenly strikes when we least expect it. And it's hitting her sun sign. And the sun sign basically, you know, causes her to suddenly be on stage to be the focal point. Mm. So usually vice presidents are not exactly... Uh, you know, sort of like stepping in front of the uh, president, and this is exactly what she's doing. So, uh, so because of them both, uh, with Biden having some negative configurations and her having some very positive configurations that suddenly change the makeup of like what is there, uh, I would have to be, you know, more or less like look at it that I, I'm not sure uh, for one reason or another uh, that uh, Biden is going to be there in the uh, Oval Office there. Okay. So, you know, as you know, uh, we've had a pandemic going on for a while. Oh and goodness. in fact, today, today, the, uh, the governor of California announced that he wants to lock down the entire state for three <laughs> weeks and he's issued a stay at home order. Right. So um, how do you see this playing out nationwide? Do you see the lockdowns continuing or will they conclude fairly soon? You know, I'm, I'm looking at it in a couple of different ways, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it in trying to have faith in the, uh, uh, the medical system, so to speak, that like maybe it will sort of like detour uh, the amount of people that uh, can certainly get COVID. But I'm looking for this to escalate through January as well as even February. And uh, myself and my colleagues have been, you know, telling uh, our clients uh, certainly to, uh, you know, stock up with water and, uh, you know, cash money, uh, as well as like, uh, you know, things that, um, you know, from the grocery store, obviously, you know, and um, because of uh, what's basically going to be going on in the, in the next few months here. Uh, so the states, states like New York and California appear to be imploding with vast numbers of residents moving out of them for tax reasons and other issues. Do you think the problems in those states will uh, are going to continue to persist or will they stabilize and improve at some point in the near future? Oh, I, I not only think they're going to persist, I think they're going to get worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you start seeing, uh, you know, the major corporations moving out of California, uh, <laughs> they, they've got insight. They, they know, let's get out of here while we can and let's get the... You know, let's take our, our, our money with us and sort of like reinvest it in other areas. So uh, I have a, a lot of clients uh, out there. As a matter of fact, they're in the Hollywood industry, as a matter of fact. And, and that is totally flat. 
So what do you see happening to the price of gold, silver, and Bitcoin over the next year or two? Gold is going to go up. Let me put it this okay. way. Uh, but I think that probably by uh, 2024, let's just say January 24, uh, I think gold will be uh, over the $3,000 uh, an ounce mark. And same thing for silver, you think? Yeah, silver will go up. So tell me about China. Do you see China continuing to escalate its political and economic aggressiveness towards the U.S. over the next few years? Um, <laughs> No, I don't. And the reason that I don't that I think that this is one of the, uh, the one of the first agendas uh, uh, or maybe one of the top 10 agendas that uh, Biden is going to be making uh, is to renew the trade agreements uh, with China. Now, you mentioned a recession uh, in, in February or March a few minutes ago. Do you think that uh, the U.S. is headed into a major depression? I don't think it's going to be a major depression as much as that um, that it's going to be uh, extremely weak and fragile as far as the economics are concerned. Look, uh, everything that's been put out of business, every, everybody that's like, you know, uh, sort of like uh, getting the change out of their jars, so to speak, uh, it's going to take them uh, a good year to recover. You don't recover in the next month. It's like going through a divorce. So it's like, yeah, in a month, I'm ready for, you know, to start dating people. You don't do that. You know? And so, so that this is going to be going on for quite some time. I'm not looking until we get into probably January, February, until we start getting into a true and authentic uh, economic recovery. So, there are literally tens of millions of Americans still out of work. A lot There's of 50 million people. They just said 50 million people in the bread lines. Yeah. And by that, the way, by the way, that's um, embarrassing. That's by, embarrassing. By the way, did you see that uh, that uh, line of cars in Texas who were lining up for some food 12 hours exactly. long? Imagine exactly. That. Exactly. Uh, and so, nothing is being done. Do you believe the job market's going to improve or get worse over the next year or two? Well, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be improved, but we're we're basically talking about uh, the economics of that job. I mean, is it going to give you some health insurance? Is it going to give you a four hundred one k? No, I don't think it's going to do anything like that at all. It's going to be a mediocre job uh, that you can buy your groceries, pay your rent, get the car payment, and maybe spend a few dollars to, uh, you know. Well, we can't go to the movies anymore, but. Uh, you know, maybe we can go on a brief day, weekend vacation. So as a company, Amazon has turned into a major power. They're, they've almost got sovereign power. They're almost at a national, uh, they're almost a nation state onto themselves. Right. Um, uh, do you see that, continue, do you see Amazon continuing to grow or has it? Been, I, 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 look, I think Amazon uh, within the, through 2021 is probably going to grow at least 20%. I mean, e-commerce is going to be the way to go. Is, is how, so I'm looking at like uh, maybe Adobe, maybe like uh, companies like Oracle, you know, things of this particular nature. So there is a lot, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of uh, migration from New York and California uh, to the Midwest, to the Southern states, to, to Florida, to your area. Now, you reside in Tennessee. Uh, how is the economy and the quality of life in Tennessee these days and, and perhaps the surrounding states, if you're familiar with them? Well, I think the quality of life here is, uh, you know, I, I would have to give it like uh, probably uh, eight out of 10 stars. Um, but the thing is, is that we do need to understand that just as much uh, that in other major cities, you know, the restaurants and the bars and, and certainly Nashville is, a, you know, a tourist area. And, and so uh, these people that work in that industry, um, it, yeah, they're, they're, they're suffering like other cities. But the thing is, is that uh, the way the thing, the, the reason that people are coming here is that, uh, you know, as far as the tax structure is concerned, I mean, Amazon is building a major high rise in uh, the city of Nashville right now. And then it's got two big warehouses, one south of Nashville, one of north of Nashville. Uh, because of the economics. And I'm sure the state is probably giving them, you know, tax free for, you know, five or eight years or something of that particular nature to have them come here. But we've got a lot of, uh, 
you know, people from actually New, the New York area, the California area and other areas, obviously, that are coming here because the standard of living here, uh, you know, is uh, a lot better from where they're coming from. They're getting more for their dollar. That's for sure. Sure. You know, in fact, there are a lot of ghost malls across the United States, malls that are either completely shut down or right. they just have one or two anchor stores in them. And what's happening now in many instances is Amazon is going in and leasing or buying these malls that they help put out of business. And they're now using them as distribution and fulfillment centers. Exactly. So, so what percentage of your clients uh, would you estimate use your astrological consultations to guide their business decision-making? And have any of them told you any, uh, any of the success stories they've had uh, using your advice? Well, first of all, I would probably say only about 5 to 7%. Okay. And let me put it this way. Being here in Nashville, uh, one of the reasons I moved down here is because I've got a lot of clients in the entertainment industry. Uh, but the thing is, is that I've got a client that basically uh, owns a major label here. Uh, and the thing is, is that she has her human resource center call me uh, with people that they are uh, prospective uh, people that they are going to hire and give me their birth dates. And then I can look at them and analyze them because, you know, resumes can be pretty spit and polished. Let's understand that. OK. And so the thing is, is that when you give me, a, you know, a birth date, um, you're giving me a lot of information that you would rather keep in the closet. Let's put it that way. And so then that way I in turn will then call, um, you know, the person that, um, you know, owns the company because we created a friendship as a matter of fact. And uh, then, you know, say whether this person should be hired or not, because a lot of people are there for a paycheck. You know, a lot of people are there just because, well, I've got a job. Let me get this until something else comes along. So is she looking to avoid hiring certain astrological signs or certain people with specific personality traits that she feels incompatible with? Well, I, well, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's personality traits she's incompatible with uh, be, because, uh, um, you know, every once in a while, I think that um, maybe we need to listen to a person that is a little bit outside the lines that has a different opinion. But that opinion can be, you know, a lot more progressive. So when I look at it, I'm looking at the person, you know, more or less like, do, are they persistent? Are they determined? You know, are they analytical? Can they do the uh, job of maybe like three people? You know, are they there, you know, to help uh, improve uh, the company they're working for? Or are they they're simply there for a paycheck? So let's talk about real estate. Uh, what do you see happening in the real estate sector over the next year or two? Do you see prices increasing or decreasing? Oh, no, I think there's going to be a major fallout with the real estate market. Is how it, I think this is why interest rates are being kept low at this particular time. Uh, but let's understand, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, uh, a lot of people out of work. They're not able to make their payments. The government is about to, I think, instill... Uh, that you're no longer protected from being evicted, you know, and things of this particular nature. And uh, I don't think that, you know, I mean, I think that these people, I mean, let's understand, we got, we got a stimulus check for $1,200. <laughs> Does that even pay anybody's bill for a month? You know, and in, in, I haven't gotten anything since then, but yet people, lives are even more in dramatic conditions than they were. In 2008, I attended foreclosure auctions in Michigan during the crash. And I saw homes that were previously going for 500,000, 600,000 right. being auctioned off for 80, 90, 100,000. I remember one guy, one guy next to me, he was <laughs> bidding at a house in Rochester. He showed me the, oh my comp, goodness. He showed me the cops, the comps for the house previously, $600,000. Yeah, he that's was, a very he opulent was, area. He was the winning bidder at $105,000. Well, the same thing went up down in Florida. Mm -hmm. we run down to Florida and, and pick up, uh, you know, a home down there that had, a, you know, a pool, let alone go to the ocean. So, you know, what I saw were 80% drops in 2008. What kind of drops do you see happening now in real estate? Oh, I, uh, um, 
I, I think that we can get into at least the double digits, at least that. I mean, the interest rates will remain low. So Elon Musk seems to be taking America into the future with his companies like Tesla, oh my SpaceX, goodness. and Starlink. He's the new Telsa, isn't he? I mean, not the new Telsa, but I mean, uh, I, I wanted to say Howard that. Hughes, you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, but this guy, this guy is so smart. I mean, NASA, you know, just sort of like downsized itself. This guy was smart enough to go down there and get these scientists and get these engineers and basically say, hey, look, there's no curfew on your intelligence here. Come on to my company and let's like, get, you know, get these ideas and let's get these things moving. And look at what he's doing now. Now we don't have to send our astronauts over to uh, Russia and, and, and pay those millions of dollars to take them up to, uh, you know, the uh, space station here. We can do it ourselves. And, and this guy is probably going to put a station on the moon. He's going to probably head to Mars. But what other kind of innovative things are on his mind? You know, that well, he just announced he's going to be getting into electric powered yachts. So. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, if you go online and you look at the, uh, the, the, the photos and the renderings, they are stunning, stunning. So, but, but, but this is the, the, this is the uh, progressive reform, you know, is more or less like what it is. And I'm just not sure. I mean, th thank God we've got these avatars, you know, that want to take us into the future. You know, is is how I would look at it. So, yeah, this this uh, this guy. I don't know how many billions of dollars he's worth, but uh, you know, he he's he's gonna uh, probably uh, uh, you know surpass uh, uh, surpass uh, you know the uh, the president of Amazon. You know, in just a few years. Yeah, he just officially became the second richest man. <laughs> oh my God! So artificial Stay intelligence. Stay in school and by, learn. <laughs> by the way, this guy was broke as broke gets years ago. I heard he that story. fought his way in. I heard that story. So artificial intelligence is gaining popularity and usage in a lot of professions and fields. Do you think that software and AI will eventually understand astrology well enough to make it even more accurate in its forecasts for people and businesses? Uh, absolutely. But I, I do think uh, that the that the astrologer is going to have to be there, um, you know, to act as a catalyst, you know, so that the uh, so that the uh, there, there's a a more complete understanding, of like uh, what the computer has printed out for you. Sure. Well, listen. Uh, before we wrap things up, uh, if people want to get a hold of you for a consultation, uh, uh, do do you have a phone number or a website you would like to give out? Well, uh, let me give out my website because the phone number email is there. It's more or less like what it is, but it's uh, thomasparsonsastrologer.com. All right. And also you mentioned you and had some, me, colleagues, some colleagues that helped you prepare for this. Uh, yes, I, I just episode. wanted to like, you, you know, so, drop their names because they helped. Uh, we worked together very diligently last year to uh, give a forecast of what was going to be going on this year, uh, last December, and we posted it in January on all our websites. Unfortunately, uh, it's about an hour and a half, and people like uh, to listen to maybe 10 minutes of conversation, but we said the Supreme Court, we said unemployment, we said the pandemic, and so uh, they've uh, helped me uh, here with uh, what I've been talking to you about today, uh, Mallory Key, who is now an accredited astrologer, she became accredited a couple of years ago, a colleague of mine here in Nashville, and then uh, Olivia Bishop that just got her accreditation about uh, four months ago, as a matter of fact. So listen, I want to thank you for being on the John Ark Show and tell you that uh, you're always welcome back at any time. And I want to wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Enjoy your holidays. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.